finally, we are in the step of filling out the form for a non-immigrant visa. So, remember, punta kayo dito sa website na to. You can see it in the screen. And then, you just select the location, which is Philippines. Tapos, sulat nyo lang yung code, which is 6 E T W. And then, you can test your photo. Pwede nyong uh, nakalagay sa USB yon. Tapos, i- upload nyo lang yung picture. Kung hindi kayo computer literate, you can ask siguro yung anak nyo or pamangkin nyo or apo nyo. Kung sino man yung marunong because I'm sure may makakatulong sa inyo dyan. And then, you just press start an application. Just click it. And then, ayan, nandito na tayo sa next screen. So, Sabi dito, your application ID is AA009CLBRD. Remember, remember this application ID because you will need it. Mas lalo pag hindi nyo natapos tong form na to, you will need this application ID. And then there's a security question. What is the given name of your mother's mother? So I will write it. And then, you just click continue afterwards. So, I click already continue. Lalabas na yung personal information page. So, just put your surname. Kunwari, Nila Cruz. Pangalan mo ay Juan. Ilagay mo lang yung full name in native al alphabet, Juan de la Cruz. So, ang tip ko dito, ang given names nyo, kung... You have two or dalawang first names. Kunwari, Juan Miguel. Lagay mo yung Miguel. Uh, ilagay mo na rin ang iyong middle name. Kasi uh, nakalagay din dito na if your passport does not include a given name, please enter FNU in given names. But uh, you can put yung all the surnames listed in your passport. If only one name is listed in your passport, enter that surname. So, yun ako. Nalala ko, nilagay ko yung middle name ko dito sa uh, given names. Have you ever used other names? Ako ang nilagay ko, yes, kasi ako ay may maiden name dati. Kasi married na ako ngayon. So, nilagay ko yung maiden name ko before. Do you have a teleco that represents your name? I, I think this does not apply to us, Filipinos. So, I will click no. And then, ang sex ko, syempre ako, female, but for the a person na ginamit natin dito, which, which is Juan de la Cruz, so siya ay male. Then, just put in your marital status. Then, put in the date and place of your birth. Ayan. Just put yung city, kung saan ka pinanganak, state, province, tapos yung country and region. And then, just click Next personal to this one. Ki click nyo lang yan. After I click continue, uh, sa personal information to na tayo pupunta. So, country and region, region of origin, nationality, of course, Philippines. Do you hold or have you held any nationality other than the one indicated above on nationality? Well, I was born in the Philippines. Never ako nag-change ng nationality ko. So, ang answer ko dito, ang sagot ko dito ay no. Kung ikaw ay nag-change ng nationality mo dati, uh, of course, yung sagot mo ay yes. Pero, I assume na most na kukuha ng uh, tourist visa or non-immigrant visa ay taga-Pilipinas at hindi pa uh, nakahold ng any nationality. So, same as uh, the next question, are you a permanent resident of a country or region other than your country? Region of origin indicated above? Of course, no. No ulit. So, just click no. And for your national identification number, ito yung isa sa mga uh, fill in the blanks na ang mga nakikita ko usually na sinesearch online. This is your national ID number. Wala tayong national ID number sa Pilipinas kung hindi, kung ang tawag natin doon ay ang 
natin ang uh, tax identification number. So, that already applies. So, ilagay nyo lang yung TIN number nyo dito. If you don't have a TIN number, then just click does not apply. And, of course, sabi ko nga kanina, halos lahat, mga 99% ang nag apply ay mga uh, Filipinos na gustong mag dito sa US. So, wala tayong US Social Security number. Just click does not apply. And, it also... Uh, goes the same with the U.S. Taxpayer ID number. Does not apply. Just click it too. Uh, just remember, if you are an em uh, an employee, lagay mo lang yung TIN number mo dito. And then, you just click Next Travel. This one over here. And then, the travel information. So, bakit kailangan ito? Kailangan malaman ng a consul kung ano ba yung purpose ng trip mo sa US. It will help them in deciding to approve or not your um, US non-immigrant visa or tourist visa. So, purpose of trip to the US, I guess halos lahat naman sa atin gusto lang natin talaga na mamasyal. So, you click this one, yung B, Temporary Business Pleasure Visitor. Always remember, if you want to visit the U.S., just click this. Lagging B. Hindi pwedeng iba. Hindi pwedeng religious worker. Hindi pwedeng temporary worker. Lalo yan, hindi pwede. Because, as uh, stated namin, sa una pa lang sa video namin, is that yung purpose ng visa nito is yung B1, B2 is for tourists. Not, not, not yung kung, uh, im, kung, imig, kung immigrant visa or kung working visa, this does not apply to you. This is only for those who wants to take a vacation in the U.S. or mag-visit sa mga relatives. So, just click them. This one, yung B nga. And then, specify. So, are you attending a business conference? Or are you going to go to the U.S. because of tourism or medical treatment? Uh, what we did here is we put B2. Yung uh, family ko. Yung husband ko, dalawang anak ko, same as what, with my in-laws, and yung mga tita ko din, nilagay nila SB2. Most likely, ang mabibigay is B1, B2, but uh, that's beside the point. So, just click B2. Unless, of course, you're attending a business or a conference. But, uh, reminder, this video is for those who wants to get a visa under a, um, under a temporary visitor for tourism. Okay, so... Click B2. I also assume that you are getting a US visa because you already have an intended date of arrival. Meron ka ng plano pumunta sa US. So, ano ba ang date na ilalagay mo? Uh, making this video, today is October 11. So, I don't know when guys nyo plano pumunta. If after a month or next year, just put it here. Kung ano intended date of arrival nyo. And intended le length of stay in the U.S. So, always months, weeks, or days. Hindi tayo pwedeng years. Kasi allowed lang ang tourist visa ng 6 months dito sa U.S. May less than 24 hours if you want less than 24 hours. But maybe a safe answer would be 1 to 2 months or 2 to 3 months. Yeah, you know, so as long as justified naman yung answer mo why you want it that long, diba? And person or entity paying for your trip. So what is our advice here? My advice here and my personal take here is be honest. If a relative of yours, kung kapatid, anak, magulang, lolo, lola, ang sasagot ng biyahe mo papuntang US, other person. Pero kung kaya mo naman na ikaw ang mismong magbabayad ng ticket mo at gastos mo sa US, put self. But yung iba kasi, uh, merong companies na nagsusponsor, so they put present employer or employer in the US. Yeah, so I will just cover those kasi uh, personal experience then The first time I applied for a US visa noong 2008, Yung employer ko yung nag-sponsor ng trip sa akin. So, I place present employer. 
and then when I uh, renewed my visa last year or rather this year which is um, 2019 I put other person other person because it uh, it's my husband na pay for my trip so just be honest with this one with the person or entity paying for your trip because if you put yourself and in the day on the day of the interview you cannot validate na ikaw yung magbabayad if they check on your um, bank certificate or ask how much you're earning and hindi mo mapapatunayan na kaya mo ngang magsustain sa trip mo then you will be regretting your answer here so be honest okay that's a tip that i can say to all just be honest who will be paying for your trip of course after you fill out this form like um i'll put other person and and or if i put the present employer they will be asking you uh, or rather ask you to fill out the the blanks like sino yung magpapay like um i know for a fact na uh, sa family ko i have an uncle na um siya yung nagbabayad talaga ng uh, ng plane ticket so they they write his name yung surname and then yung given name of course the number and then the email address of the person and relationship to you you know it can be a child parent spouse other relative friends or, or others you know just be honest I think yan yung uh, isa talaga sa kailangan sa lahat naman ng bagay. Pero for getting a US visa, uh, madami nagtatanong ng tips. Ako ano lang talaga, pagiging honest lang. And then of course, you have to click next, your travel companions. Just click this part. Before I forget, uh, nakasulat din dun sa... Uh, previous na, na fill out natin is yung address kung saan kayo magsistay. So, just put it if it's a hotel, sulat nyo yung address. If it's um, a, a house of your relative, then just place their address. And then, yung next is yung travel companions information. So, are there other persons traveling with you? Uh, siguro more than 50% may kasama. Pag if wala, just click no. If may kasama, just click yes. So, tatanungin, are you traveling as part of a group or organization? You click yes if you are. If meron kang travel na kasama mo yung community mo, like from church kunwari or from your work, or if you're a member of an organization, you put yes. Pero if family, you put no or pag friends. Kasi they will be asking you this or ask. You have to fill out yung surnames of person traveling with you given names of person traveling with you sa kayo relationship mo. A parent, spouse, child, other relative, friend, business associate. Like, kunwari, if you have a business trip, then sasabihin mo, yung kasama mo is your business associate. Like, for my first uh, US trip, nung kumuha kami ng visa ng uh, office mate ko, siya yung kasama ko. So, naturally, I place business associate. But, yun nga, if you're part of a group, or an organization, put yes. Then after that, you just click next, previous US travel. Okay, so after I click continue, nandito na tayo sa previous US travel information. So, ang tatanungin sa inyo dito is, have you ever been in the US? Have you ever been issued a US visa? Have you ever been refused a U.S. visa or been refused admission to the United States or withdrawn your application for admission at the port of entry? And has anyone ever filed an immigrant petition on your behalf with the United States Citizen and Immigration Services? So, as a first-timer, I remember, syempre, yung sinagot ko dito is, I have never been to the U.S. So, sagot ko is, no. Have you ever been issued a U.S. visa? Of course, hindi rin. That was the first time I applied in 2008. Have you ever been refused a U.S. visa? So, yung first time ko, syempre, sagot ko is no. And has anyone ever filed an immigrant petition? Well, so far, I remember, wala namang nag-file sa akin. So, no ang sagot ko dyan. But, there are instances where 
na refuse ka na ng US visa. Like yung husband ko, si Ian, he was refused three times. So, imagine nyo that on the fourth try niya naman with oh, our kids, if you have um, watched our uh, previous video, Ian will put the link somewhere below para makita nyo kung ano yung sinasabi ko. So, three times kong nilagay sa form na no. Kasi nga, fourth time siya na-approve. So, yun yung testimony namin. Na-refuse na siya. Na-deny. Given that uh, he was given the blue paper. Diba? Ang ibig sabihin nun is uh, denied ka. And then, uh, sa case naman kasi namin, wala rin namang nag-file sa amin ng uh, petition. So, yung sagot namin is no. We have friends. Uh, na file na sila. Um, sabi ko nga kanina is you need to be honest. So, they put yes. And nakakuha naman sila ng US visa. You just really need to be honest in filling out the form. You need to be honest with your intentions. You know, the consul will see it. We'll see naman kung ano yung reasons mo for it. Eh. And then you just click the next, the address and phone. The address and a phone information. So, you just have to uh, put your home address in the Philippines, yung street address, yung city, yung state and province, yung zip code, yung country and region, of course, Philippines. And is your mailing address the same as your home address? So, most likely or not, ang sagot natin dito naman is uh, usually yes, di ba? Iisa lang mailing address and home address natin. But if it's different, then put no. And put your primary phone number. This is important kasi um, if they need to contact you, doon ka nila contact So put your primary phone number. And if you have a secondary phone number, put it also. But if you don't have, just click does not apply. And if you have a work phone number, maganda na na ilagay mo dyan. Kung wala, does not apply. And of course, your email address. Ako, I always, yung email ko talaga sobrang important. Yan, halos lahat naman tayo may email addresses na. If wala kang email addresses or address, uh, just ask a relative or a friend to help you how to get an email address. Madali na lang yan. And after that, you, uh, the, the form will, in the form, it will have a question na do you have a social media presence? Uh, this one, we haven't encountered it. Uh, nabalitaan lang namin to this year, siguro mga one to two months ago, sinabi nila na may question na about social media. So, assuming again na perhaps um, the consuls or someone from the U.S. Embassy uh, is checking the social media presence of the the one applying. We don't know the reasons for that, but of course, halos lahat naman ngayon may social media. So, you just click. Which one? Manami yan eh, pero usually sa Pilipinas, Facebook, Instagram, may pa konti na LinkedIn, pati Pinterest, um, may Twitter din, yung iba, baka may Tumblr din, may YouTube, ayan, like kami, may YouTube channel kami. If wala, none. You know, you just be honest again. Kung meron o wala. Kasi mahanap nila yan. And then you just click yung next, yung passport. And then after you click continue, passport information. Yan. Uh, if you remember correctly, sa mga videos namin, sinabi namin na requirement ang passport. Yan yung number one na nilagay namin, passport. Yan. Why? Because you need to put your information here. Like, Siyempre, usually naman, halos lahat tayo regular um, passport. And then, just put your passport number here. Um, ilan ba ang, ano ngayon, ang characters ng passport number? I'll count mine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, 9. 9 characters. Um, a passbo- passport book number, it does not apply naman. I think it applies to mga... Um, Dip- diplomats ata, I'm not sure. And then, the country or authority that issued your passport or travel document. So, siguro, um, almost lahat naman, Philippines, pero merong iba na 
Uh, for example, nagtatrabaho sa Saudi or nagtatrabaho sa Brunei, tapos dito sa Pilipinas uh, kukuha ng uh, US visa, uh, you just click where you got your passport from. And then, sa Pilipinas ngayon, napakadaming lugar kung saan pwede kang kumuha ng passport. Just place it. Like kami, kinuha namin sa DFA Montenlupa. So, Montenlupa namin nilagay yung sa amin. Uh, state or province, ano lang yan, Metro Manila. Of course, country and region, Philippines. And that is why yung passport mo, kailangan katabi mo yan lagi. Like sa pag-fill out ng form. Kasi they will ask you yung issuance date sa kaya expiration date. So, just put it also here. Yan. Have you ever lost a passport or had one stolen? So, most, most probably naman ang sagot natin dito is no. Diba? Ano ba pag-yes? Tingnan natin pag-yes. Pag-yes, you need to provide kung ano yung um, passport or travel document number and then the country or authority that issued yung passport na yun. So, kung Philippines or ibang bansa, you need to explain. But, kung hindi naman nawala o nanakaw ang passport mo, just click no. And of course, again, you just click again yung next US contact. After continue, lalabas na yung US point of contact information. If you remember then, isa sa mga ni-require namin sa inyo is dapat alam nyo kung saan kayo magsistay, kung kanino kayo magsistay, kasi talagang ilalagay nyo yan dito sa form. So kami, uh, kung nakikinig na, na, kayo kanina pa, yung uncle ko, sa kanya kami lagi nagsistay, so I just put his surname and uh, yung given name niya, yung first name niya, a given name is a first name or um, first, yeah, first name. Pero kung dalawa yung pangalan mo, first name, first names na rin yun. And then, organization name, I guess this probably applies if you belong to an organization. Ayan, or company, you can put it here. And then, of course, relationship to you, uh, relative ang ilalagay ko kasi wala namang uncle, wala namang auntie or grandfather or grandmother. So, relative yung lalagay. Unless, of course, you're staying with a spouse, a friend, a business associate, employer, school official, and others. Yan. Just be honest again. After that, you click yung next family. Ayan, makikita nyo siguro to. Pag may konti ka kasing uh, delay or lag ba yung tawag doon, papakita nila lagi yan. So, one tip that I can uh, give you guys is, hindi naman yung super bilis yung pag-type mo, pero be sure na lahat ng information or documents na sa tabi mo. Yung hindi mo na kukunin sa cabinet or akit ka pa sa second floor para kunin, ba? Lahat ilagay mo na sa tabi mo para maiwasan yun. So, naglag pala siya kanina. Hindi nalaga yung address and phone number of um, pagsistay yan. So, just remember to put it. Um, lahat dapat ng documents nyo nasa tabi nyo lang para madali nyo lang i-type kung saan yung address, city, state, zip code, and number. Um, be sure that you also know yung phone number na kung saan kayo magsistay. And then, the next thing that the form uh, needs is family information or your relatives. So, you just need to put yung father's full name and date of birth as well as yung mother's full name and date of birth. And then, tatanungin kung yung father mo ba nasa US. So, kung hindi naman, di ba, pag ilagay kung nasa US, di sabihin yes. And then, do you have any other immediate relatives not including parents in the United States? Well, for us, like for me, if I will be the one filling out this form, ang sagot ko dito is no, kasi wala akong immediate, immediate relative na nandito. But if yung husband ko yung sasagot, um, he will say yes kasi yung sister niya is uh, working here. So, just, he will just put in the information and the relationship, which is a sibling. And if um, you have a, a relative here, like a spouse or a Child, child, yan, ilagay niya lang. Kasi usually yung mga nag apply din ng US visa is yung may mga um, anak dito sa states or may magulang. And then relative status, kung US citizen ba, 
U.S. legal permanent resident, which I think is a green card holder. Or you can also put non-immigrant, which is also a, which is a tourist. And yeah, and then just click your next spouse. And then it will also ask you, do you have any other relatives in the United States? If you have a um, an uncle or a cousin, yeah, it, you just click yes. And then click next spouse. So if you have a spouse, then you can put in the full name and then yung uh, given name, yung date of birth ng spouse, yung spouse, country, or region of, of origin, kung Filipino ba siya, or kung ibang lahi, and then the spouse's place of birth. Yan. And then you just click next, yung work, education, and training naman. And if you remember earlier, um, nung tinatanong yung status ko, I said married. So naturally, lalabas tong page na to. Uh, I'm assuming naman, syempre, if single yung sinabi mo, hindi, hindi mo kailangan, of course, mag-fill out nito, diba? Yan, and then you just click next. And then we're here at the present work education training information page. So, primary occupation. Well, you can be a homemaker. I uh, put homemaker in my recent renewal. Pero before, I put in, I think, something related to my work that time. Yeah, and you just click it. Um, for example, let's put in research. And then, they will ask you your present employer. If you're studying, your school name. You just put in the details of your present employer. And then, describe your duties. And after that, you just click Next Security Background. Again, be honest with your monthly income and local currency. Um, you know, um, doon nila makikita if, if you said yourself, ikaw magbabayad, makikita nila if kaya ba ng monthly income mo. Kung hindi naman, then probably iba yung magsusustenta doon sa trip ninyo. You have to be honest with your monthly income kasi... Uh, yung konsul, tatanong, isa sa mga questions na tatanungin nila yan sa'yo is how much do you earn? Especially if you're, yun nga, employee ka, tatanungin niya. Pwede nila tanungin how long you have been working because they want to evaluate and uh, check and validate if sinabi mo na self, ikaw yung magsusustento ng trip mo, if you really can shoulder the expenses kasi a ticket alone, it will cost you around um, $600 to $1,200 round trip. So, paano pa yung iba mong expenses? Like, if you're staying in a hotel, kung di ka uh, makikitira sa relatives, di ba? So, parang automatic yan, kinokompute na nila yan. Um, I've heard interviews uh, from the from the past na nandun na kasi medyo Actually, marininig mo talaga yung tanong ng mga consul. So, narininig ko talaga like uh, there was one time yung dentist tinanong how many chairs do you have? So, I was surprised kung bakit tinanong ng consul yun. So, apparently, she knows na pagka-dentist ka, may, may syempre naturally may upuan, pero parang hindi ko naisip na like ako tatanungin ko pa ba yun? So, very, very smart question. Tapos yun nga yung sinagot ng dentist is she has two chairs. So, Maybe it's also um, viewing it economically na kung two chairs to, malakas kumita to. So, something like that. Mapapaisip talaga din sila kung kaya mo. So, just be honest in answering if you will be the one to shoulder the expenses or kung yung relative mo. Kung relative mo naman, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, madami akong kilala na ang relative nila yung bumibili ng ticket nila. Even shouldering the Disneyland tickets, you know. Ganun talaga. We are peso earners, you know, from the Philippines. And sila, kumikita sila ng dollars, so there's a big effect. I'm not saying na yung lahat ng nandito sa US is mayayaman, but may impact din talaga yung peso-dollar exchange rate. So, after you finish um, uh, writing yung mga answers nyo dito, you go to next to security and background. So, if you place homemaker and then kinlik mo yung next, 
tatanungin ka, were you previously employed? So, yes, I was previously employed. So, I'll just put yung employer name ko dito. And then, I'll just add another if uh, madami akong companies na uh, na-employ before. Then, after that, I can go ahead and click the next security and background. Ayan. So, pag dumating ka na dito sa part na to, medyo makakahinga ka na ng maluwag kasi halos lahat ng sagot dito I know. So, uh, it's the security and background check, part 1. Question number 1, do you have a communicable disease or public health significance? Ayan. Kung may sakit ka daw ba, you just read it and most likely naman ang sagot dito is no. Do you have a mental or physical disorder that poses or is likely to pose a threat to the safety or welfare of yourself or others? No. Are you or have you ever been a drug abuser or addict? No. And then click next for part two. Have you ever been arrested or convicted for any offense or crime even though subject of a pardon, amnesty, or other similar action? No. Just read this, guys. Ang sagot ko dito is puro no. Again, if any of these will um, have you to answer yes, then just click yes. The implications, I don't know, but I just really like to be honest. Gusto ko talaga maging honest sa uh, pagsagot ng form na ito. Kasi parang feeling ko, um, pag nagsinungaling ako, mahuhulit, mahuhuli rin nila and then yan, part 3, puro no lang siya. I've, re I've um, reviewed this, so um, the answer is guys, no. And like this one, are you a member or representative of a terrorist organization? No. And it's really a background check. And, uh, but my advice to you is just read it one by one. And then, let's go to part 4. Have you ever sought to obtain or assist others to obtain a visa entry into the United States or any other United States immigration benefit by fraud or willful misrepresentation or other unlawful means? Of course, no. No, din ang ko dyan. And then, next, in part 5. Have you ever withheld custody of a U.S. citizen child as outside the United States from a person granted legal custody by a U.S. court? Of course, no. Have you voted in the United States in violation of any law or regulation? No. Have you ever renounced United States citizenship for the purposes of avoiding taxation? Of course, no. Then. And finally, the photo. So, I assume that when you have or are answering yung form na ito, ay meron na kayong na-upload na photo na nasa USB nyo. So, you, you just upload, upload your photo. And then, you click next, confirm photo. Okay, going back. So, na-upload ko yung photo. If the photo passes the quality standards, then lalabas ito. Meron kang... Check dito. And photo, pass, quality, standards. And then you just continue using this photo. Unless, of course, you want to change it. Ayan, lumaba siya ulit. So, kailangan talaga um, wala masyadong gap sa pag-fill out. And then, you click next review. And then, you will just review everything, everything that you put, hanggang sa end. Nag-next lang ako, nag-next, hanggang sa nakaabot ako dito sa location information. So, nakasabi dito, location where you will be submitting your application, of course, Manila, Philippines. And then, you just click yung next, sign and submit. And then, you're done. Diba? Click next, sign and submit. So, ayan, nandito na tayo sa sign and submit. So, you just read this. And then, did anyone assist you in filing this application? No. 
And then e-signature, you just have to put yung passport number nyo dito sa kayong code na nakikita nyo dito sa right. Lagay nyo lang dito. And then click sign and submit application. Of course, hindi ko na siya i-click because I only uh, did this for sample purposes. And then after that, you click next confirmation.